the northern corridor runs all the way from Mombasa and connects into Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Eastern DRC, Southern Sudan. It's basically linking 200 million people into the markets, the global markets, through Mombasa as the outlet. This railway operates or straddles across Kenya and Uganda, and these are some of the strongest economies in the region. So the potential is, is, is great, and when you look at the numbers of traffic that comes through the port of Mombasa, we are looking here at over about 17 million tons per annum. And currently this railway is doing about 1.5 million tons per annum. That has come as a consequence of this railway not getting or attracting investment funds over the last 20 years to renew equipment uh, and even bring in new equipment that is in uh, tandem with the requirements of the business today. The rail was taking about 80% uh, of the traffic and the use of the road was minimal. But uh, with the inefficiency of the railway, because there were no new investment on the rail, and uh, it's happened that uh, we have a different situation now, where the road is taking about 90% uh, of the traffic. And you can see 90% of the traffic passing through the road is a very big challenge. Sometimes you are, you are loading a container on a truck, and then the truck owner says, you know, this, the, the, the roads are bad. They tell you how the uh, trucks get stuck because of poor roads. The truck is moving here to Mombasa. Several roadblocks saying, oh, you pay this, you pay that. You have not budgeted for that. Heavy cargo, you know, taking, uh, being uh, forward by road. And uh, now we have to set up uh, way bridges for uh, actual load control because the heavy cargo has been forward by road. The life of the road is becoming shorter. Uh, that is a big challenge we have. Here at the border, we have one way coming in, one way going out. But the traffic is a bit high. If the road could be widened to enable two lanes coming in and two lanes going out, we would have that problem solved. So you'll find the bottleneck is the vehicles have to come one after another. And yet they build up. Secondly, even the drivers, we operate 24 hours, but you'll find beyond 10 in the night. The traffic flow reduces compared to during the daytime. Well, the biggest uh, problem we have at the moment is logistics, infrastructure, uh, speed to market, connecting, getting across. Those are the challenges that we face. One thing is for sure is uh, Mombasa is having, it at the moment is struggling to cope up with the demand. As the trade volumes grow, We'll need to have the port which is a lot more efficient. Well, Mombasa port is not a, a modern port, I have to be honest and say. It's, um, it, it doesn't quite compare to the modern facilities of China, Europe and, and, and the West. Getting uh, specialized professional operators in to operate a facility like this often has uh, a doubling, tripling or more uh, of, of capacity and productivity as a result. They need to be done from bottom up really, uh, it's all the way from the uh, available draft in the port to the uh, nautical restrictions in the port to uh, the key sites where we're standing right now uh, to the way the stacks of containers are managed uh, to the cranes and the gear used, all the hardware if you will uh, needs to be um, needs to be operated uh, and that's a, that's a significant investment. The port of Mombasa is, 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 is a critical port for this region and out of the outward bound cargo going out of Mombasa T is number one. When you look at the Northern Corridor, it has one of the highest uh, values in terms of ratio, the ratio between the CF value of the cargo and the value of the transportation cost that is paid. So what we see is the potential that railway can actually help bring this uh, ratio to a manageable, an internationally acceptable level. The opportunities, the potential is enormous. Uh, it may sound a little bit cliche, but what happened in Southeast Asia in the 70s and 80s, it will happen here. With the one border operation, I see a very big achievement in the pipeline. So with better facilitation, better infrastructures, transport for ourselves, the better offices and the layout of the roads, we shall have no problem. I see a bright future. have uh, good policies in place. We need to have the regulatory framework in place so that we can be able to, to, to assure the private sector 
that they were going to, to get back their, their investments. And I want to, see, want to see the quality of life of, uh, of the Kenyan people and the East African people improve as a result of the interventions we are making within the improvements in the transport corridors. <laughs>